Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the lighting tutorial for this scene. So, so far what we're going to try to do is recreate this environment but in CG. So we've modeled it, we've UV mapped it, we've textured it, and in previous tutorials we've also created the cranes so then we're going to bring it all together. But in this one we're going to actually do the lighting. So I've already started lighting the environment but I want to demonstrate to you how I created this effect. So I'm going to press stop right now in Arnold and go ahead and start hiding everything. Control H. So in the last tutorial we did texturing and it looks something like this. And if I try to render right now, um, it is going to be dark because clearly there's no light. What I can do though is if I wanted to, I could add just a regular physical sun and sky just to see what it looks like. And this is what we ended up with last time. So this is controlled by a gradient and now we're going to go ahead and start giving it the elements that it needs to look good. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So the first thing I usually do is create a light dome and try to find an HDRI texture that's going to look good in this environment. So I'm going to go ahead and do a shift H. So it's a regular sky dome. So to create one, you go to Arnold Light and you create a sky dome. And then what you do is just attach a texture to it. So you click on this little guy right here and then you attach it. What I have right now is this um, name and it's only a 2K HDR. And um, what I also did, if I zoom out a little bit, is um, I kind of rotated it so it's a little crooked. And the purpose for that is because I really wanted to capture those reflections. So if I go ahead and render it right now, this is what it looks like. So the reason why I tilt it was because I really wanted to capture that reflection on the water. It's really important to capture that really interesting highlight that it gets right there. Again, I'm trying my best to match the concept art. It's not going to look exactly like it, but hopefully I can get it as close as possible. So by tilting this dome, I actually got the, the highlight where I wanted it. So don't, don't think that you have to just keep the dome as is. Feel free to rotate it around so that you can get the effect that you want. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press stop here. Now, where did I get this dome? It's called HDRI Heaven. Now, I, I don't get any sponsorship from them, by the way, but I really appreciate what they do. So if I go to HDRs, there's uh, multiple... Oh, oh, that's cool. That's a new one. Um, they have multiple HDRIs. So I just grabbed one that was kind of warm and outdoorish that looked like a desert. And as you can see, there's a ton of them. So you can just kind of get lost in here. Take a look, download a few, and if you would like, feel free to support them. But this is this is very pretty. This is interesting. And look how nice the reflections are and everything. How interesting. Anyway, I'm getting I'm getting again, I get lost here pretty easily. So check it out, um, hdriheaven.com. Okay, go back to this. The second thing I did was uh, one of the big things about this um, concept art is the fog. So you'll notice that it's pretty warm out here in the back and then it's really blue out here in the front. So how do I create that? So the first thing I needed to do was go into my render settings. And if I go to, and if I scroll down, look, go to Arnold Render, scroll down, and you're looking for environment. And what you want to choose over here is in the atmosphere. You click on this, and you're going to have two options, create AI atmosphere or AI fog. And I would recommend AI atmosphere because any light source that you have will get fog versus AI fog will just be like a gradient fog. And I actually want that control. So go ahead and create that AI atmosphere fog. So what does it do? Well, um, if I bring in a light, just a regular point light, and then I render, and it would help if I bring this up, you'll notice that I got a little bit of fog. And if I go up to my point light and increase my intensity, let's say to 100, Oh, too much. And by the way, I just did 400. Let's do 50. There it is. 10. So what I'm getting is this little hot spot that's emitting light. And um, there it is. Let me bring it into the scene. And it has fog. But the issue is, is that this is really intense. So let's bring it back down to 1. There we go. So I get this little white dot in the center, and it emits fog. So I can use that to create that blue fog in the front. So I go into my um, color of my point line and then I just pick the color that I feel like it fits. Now notice that there's a little issue here. We're getting a really hot spot right here in the front and I really don't want that hot spot. So what I can do instead is um, I'm going to scroll down 
under Arnold, I'm going to keep going down, and there's this thing called the light filters. And light filters is if I add it, I want is a light decay, and I'm going to add that as well. Click on that light decay, and then open it up. And we want to use this to kind of help us control the the lighting. So for example, if I create a uh, whoops, a near attenuation, you'll notice that the closer I get to a value like one, uh, you'll notice that it's got a little bit of like a dome. That's where the light is starting. So what I'm trying to do is kind of find a nice value that actually gets rid of that little spot. And I can also control the, the far attenuation by making sure that it ends, the glow only ends at a particular area. I'm not really interested in that right now. I'm just kind of focused on this. So let me go ahead and just kind of mess around with this. So I might want to um, reduce it there. Uh, let's see what this one does. Whoops. So I can also control it using this value as well. So let me change this to one. Maybe soften that up a little bit. There we go. Maybe turn this one off. Okay, much better. So I'll turn the start off and then I have the near to around two and you'll notice that the hot spot disappears and then I still keep the fog. This is really great because I want to control it. So just to demonstrate that, I went ahead and already created this spot, uh, point lights. And I already created these point lights and I'm going to place them in my environment. So I'm going to do a shift H and then I'm going to render. So now what I'm getting is that blue fog in the front of the scene. So let me show you really fast where they're located. I put them pretty close to the front of the environment and my computer's slowing down because of all the fog. So I'm going to stop this really quickly. And as you'll notice, the fog is actually affecting it around here and also back here as well. Okay, well, let me pick the light. There we go. I can bring it closer if I want. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that that fog falls in front of my scene. So you can tell where it kind of is located, but once it starts to render and the noise, the noise gets cleared out. So it may be a little bit too much fog for now, but if I look at the scene, it's pretty foggy. I might want to reduce it, but um, right now it's pretty foggy. I'm going to keep it as is for now, and then I'm going to mess around with it later. So that's where I got those, that fog. But what about the background? Everything's looking really, really blue. We really want to keep that yellow. Now go ahead and stop that. And the next thing is bringing in that yellow fog that we have in the background. So what I did was create a spotlight. Now the spotlight is a little hard to find, but it's way over here. And if I go in and make it larger, this won't impact anything. Let me do that again. I can make it really big, but it's hidden. So why am I doing that? Uh, let's do a shift H. There it is. So there's my spotlight and the spotlight is in fact affected by the fog as well. So let me demonstrate to you what that looks like. So if I try to render right now, you're going to see all the lights together. So I'm going to hide everything, Shift H, sorry, Control H, and then bring in the spotlight. Okay. So when I render it out, you're going to see that I'm getting that yellow in my scene. This is a pretty big light. I've, uh, I've made sure that it covers a big part of the environment and you can almost see a little bit of uh, how it impacts everything. But I'm just trying to make sure that that yellow fog is still there. So one thing that I did was select it, go panels, look through selected, and then I place it in a way so that it actually, I know that anything that's in here will get impacted. Notice the color, notice my intensity is pretty high, notice that my cone angle is also up. If I go into Arnold, Everything basically remains the same. I did increase, make sure your volume samples are up. And yep, so I basically just colored it yellow and made it more intense so we could see it. So the whole effect is actually pretty interesting. Go back to camera one. Fair brain, it's actually not too bad. I'm literally using four lights. And so when I render with all of them together, I get this nice warm feeling. So um, I get cool in the front and warm in the back. And the nice thing is, is that you still get that depth feeling. Uh, you still get that yellow feeling and you also get the fog, which is where the birds are going to be located, which is pretty neat. Um, you can't really tell. Everything still fits. Everything still blends. So I think the one part I, for, I didn't do was adding these tiny little lights in the back, which I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and press stop. Uh, it's just literally a light 
and it's probably I'm just thinking that's going to be as point light. And I'm going to bring him over here in the corner. And let me go into my perspective view here. Oh, when you get close to things, sometimes it doesn't look so hot. And then just kind of place it in here. Uh, let's see. Go to color. I want it to be warm, so let's pick a warm color. Maybe a little bit on the orangey color. And so having fog and everything is going to cause this to render a long time. So I will. All, I usually have a tendency to just hide my lights that I'm working with and just having the one light uh, reveal. So yeah, that's intense. So it's too much, but let me show you something else. I really don't want it to get affected by fog, so I'm going to tell it not to cast a volumetric shadow. So under Arnold, just turn that off. And then I can also tell it to do zero volume as well. So basically, I'm just telling to turn off volumetric. Don't even bother calculating. Don't bother calculating the volume. Just go ahead, change the volume to zero. Just affect this area here. You can see that I'm already getting that really warm effect. It's, it might be a little too bright, but and it's already reflecting in the water, which I think is kind of nice touch. But let's go ahead and grab that light and just duplicate it. So let's see where these things are. I'm going to move this to my other monitor. And this is going to help us maybe reduce the intensity a little bit. We'll see. Uh, let's see. There's a bunch of them. So I'm going to control D. Then I'm going to move this around, maybe over here. I don't want it to be in the exact same location, so I'll drop this down a little bit. Control D, there's some a little bit closer, so let's uh, bring this up. All right, grab another one. There's one kind of like in the center, so duplicate that one. I want it to be close to the ground. We got another one over here. Let me bring it down a little bit, a little bit forward. Making sure they're above the water. Duplicate that one. And let me check something. Okay, let's move this one. Maybe over here. A little higher. A little higher. Alright, let's see what we get. So we're getting some really nice little highlights and some lights. Um, this might be too strong. We'll see. We'll see how the, all of that comes together. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and bring everything back. Shift H. And then we're going to light everything up. So that one looks too strong. The, this one I might want to move. And I'm a little worried about this pick and then bring I'll maybe just bring these down a little bit. I'm a little worried about the specularity. Uh, let's see what we can do about it. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to kind of reduce the specularity. So the nice thing about Arnold's visibility is that you can actually reduce the specularity. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to make a selection here and just press play. And so it only render this section here. So if I turn it all off, notice that when I turn it off, it gets rid of it altogether. So I don't know if that's what I want, but it's too reflective on the water. So let me see if I can just kind of just a little bit more. So maybe around 0 .1, 0 0.014, because it's okay to have a hint. Um, let's close that. Just get a little closer here. I feel like it's floating, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit. How close we're here. And specular, we copied and pasted it, so I'm pasting it, pasting it. And this one was too strong for my taste. So specular. I'm gonna move it. Let's see. I'm gonna move it. It's too centered. We don't want it to be exactly centered because then it's gonna look strange. Alright, let's grab 
the next one. Specular paste. I, co I copied the value, so I'm just putting it in. Specular paste. Oh, that's what we get. So again, it's kind of like trial and error. We're just trying to figure out what's a good one, what's a good light source. This one may be too high. I think I want them closer to the, the base. And the light here looks like I lost it, so I want to bring that those back over here. But I'm kind of getting that idea. Cool. It's coming together. All right. Let's see. Where did this one... Bring it closer to you so it looks 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 like a little cluster of lights. Maybe duplicate that one and move it up a little bit. And I think what I wanted to do was just get it closer to the water. This one I think I lost, so I'm going to bring that one back to the front. Oops, and then bring it down. Make sure none of my lights are below the water. I'm getting close, but not below the water, that's good. And this one I lost altogether, so I'm going to intersect. And then I think I might want to duplicate that one and just bring it up a little higher. Something like that. All right, let's see what we get. Lots of lights. Plenty of lights. OK, that one's too high. Cool, so now they look like little clusters. So I might want to bring this one down because it looks really high. And that one's kind of looking nice, and all of these are starting to look really nice. So let me just grab a couple more. This one, I may just want to scoot to the front a little bit. I'm trying to figure out why it's capturing the lighting so interesting. This one doesn't look that high, but it looks high. So I'll just bring this down a little bit. Let's see what else was there. And there's that one up in the mountain. I thought it was a good idea. Didn't turn out to be that good. So let's bring it down so it looks like a little town of lights are near each other, which is kind of nice. Okay. All right, let's see what that looks like. And that should be a good start. I think um, we're going to move on. So the next, whoops. So the next uh, part of the tutorial is going to be to. Uh, bring all the elements together and then composite it a little bit so we can so we can kind of add the extra elements to it. So hopefully you found that very helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions by leaving comments below. Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button at the end and also hit the little bell so you don't miss any of my tutorials or the next one which is where we put it all together. And um, also don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you will find tutorials, ebooks, and a lot of other free resources. So academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate all of your support and I will see you next time.